So apologies, I was going to make a load of videos when I'm at this conference at ASE. Uh, this is my stand here, so I've got uh, a video uh, showing some of the stuff I've been doing. I've got my massive banner and then loads and loads of sherbet to give away, which teachers absolutely love. Um, but I was going to make a video every day, but in the end, I've just been so busy, I've not been able to do that. So this is a quick, um, just brief overview of the ASE. OK, so uh, this is the AQA stand. Um, are you, you're kind of in charge of the AQA science, is that right? I'm head of curriculum for science, thank you. Yes. Can you tell me what's coming up in the exams this summer? Uh, no, I'm afraid and, not. And why is that? Don't, uh, we don't see the papers until the papers come out. Yeah. Uh, if we did, then we wouldn't be able to come and talk to yourselves, colleagues at the conferences, yeah. um, or work directly with any teachers in school. And I think actually that's important. I think a lot of students don't realise that although you are AQA, um, you know, it's, it's another team who work for AQA who actually set it, and that means that you don't know what the what's coming up. Absolutely. And I suppose you want students and teachers to know um, as much as possible to help them prepare for exams, don't you? We, we want them to um, be very aware of the style of the assessment, the types of questions, yeah. um, particularly assessment objectives, focus on things like applications, the AO2. Yeah. Um, so, so when you talk about that, that's because a lot of the exam is about stuff that they don't know what might come up, as in it's a weird context or slightly different. Uh, so it won't be weird. Not, not weird. It'll, okay. be, it'll be things that aren't listed in the specifications. So, yeah. so AO2 is about application of their knowledge and understanding and skills yeah. in different contexts. So if you just if you learn the revision guide and you learn the specification, that doesn't guarantee you a grade nine because you have to be able to apply that to new situations, don't you? You do indeed. The the actual content. Um, is AO1, yeah. and that would give you the 40% of the marks that's for AO1. Yeah. Half of that is for the content, the knowledge and understanding part of the content, yeah. the scientific concepts. The other half of it is for the practical skills and techniques. Very good. Use of apparatus. Okay. I've got another question from a student they asked me. Okay. In terms of calculators to go yes. in a GCSE exam, yes. what are the requirements? Um, the requirements are actually um, located on the JCQ website, and it's, okay. that's the place to go to and check. And I'll put a link below the video so you can see it straight from the horse's yes. mouth to say this is what you're allowed. Okay, I mean, basically, they can't have a, a memory in which they could store anything. And that's because there's lots of like equations to remember and things like that. You don't want people having an unfair advantage. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, that would prevent them from being able to yeah. take the exam to be And, I mean, for me personally, I think a normal, just normal uh, scientific calculator... Um, maybe does sign if, if, if you need a bit of trigonometry? Or? The most important thing is that whichever calculator they're going to use, you're going to use in the exam yeah. is the calculator that you, you've used in lessons. And that means so. that's why it's a good idea as well to have your own calculator, not just rely on your mobile phone in lessons, you I think. You can't take mobile phones yeah, yeah. into the exams, therefore if you've used a mobile phone in your lessons to do a calculator, as a calculator you wouldn't be able to use that. So Perfect. it just needs to be the calculator you're going to use. Okay. And if you're a student and you really, you're really you not sure, if you ask your teachers, the Absolutely. teachers have the ability to either put questions to yourself or actually access the Absolutely. most up-to-date information. Students' first port of call is always the teacher. Yeah. And yeah don't, we, don't be emailing AQA. If, so if you yeah. email us, we will take you back to your teachers Yeah. Um, because that's our direct link. Yeah. Um, if it's a, a very straightforward question in terms of the structure of the exam, we will answer it. Cool. But it does need to be your teacher who provides you with the guidance as to what you're doing, how to do it. Brilliant. They're the teaching and learning experts. Yeah. We're focused on the assessment yeah. side. And actually, I think the final thing I saw I think keep saying a final thing. Um, I saw recently there's a few changes to the GCSE physics specification. They're yeah, very, very minor. And it's to do with the equation for transformers being used for the combined trilogy. It's not just the separate physics now. And it, it's always been that. Yeah. Um, so it's a clarification it's oh, okay. that actually that is the case. Yeah, and I think, again, that's something that if you're not sure about what, I'm, what we're talking about, your teachers will have access to that. And if they haven't heard about it, it's all on the website, isn't yeah. it? In the... It's all on the website. It's not the equation relating to numbers of, of terms. Yeah. Um, it's the equation relating to the current and the voltage of the transformer. So, so it's basically V equals IR yeah. on the two halves. So the IV equals IV. Perfect. Thanks for your help. That's good. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Do you want to be in the video? Um, <laughs> what do you do? You're, you're a teacher, aren't you? But yeah. you also do stuff for the Royal Academy of Engineering. Yeah, I'm um, a teacher. I'm going to wait. I've got to get it right now, haven't I? <laughs> I am part of the Connecting STEM Teachers Project, and I'm the Ports of Network. <laughs> yeah. So basically, what we've both done before is actually uh, just try and get more people involved in STEM activities and <laughs> special network. stuff. Yeah. And uh, if you're a teacher watching this, there's loads of videos I did with the Royal Academy to kind of, I guess, promote stuff that we do in schools, isn't it? And all yeah. Yeah, they're really good and the dex kits in the latest um, resource box are incredible um, really really good for circuits um, yeah. so yeah my school's important for lovely dex kits fantastic okay thank you very much see you later, you later.
Hi there. Can I ask you a question? I see you've just put something into your mouth. I have. Okay, um, while you're eating that, the question is, for A-level physics specifically, do students need to be able to count the squares under a graph to work out the area? Oh my gosh, I've no idea. Okay, that's what AQA said. Um, and if so... My, my, guess, my guess is, depending on what graph it is, if it's yeah. a linear graph, I would have thought we would expect them to be able to calculate the area under um, the graph from a Newton triangle. Yeah. If it was a curve, I would probably say that counting squares under the graph is probably the easiest way of doing it. Because it's like a quick way of approximating the area. Okay, and, and I suppose another question I had was, why is there not much calculus at A-level physics? Is it because a lot of people who do A-level physics don't necessarily do A-level math? Uh, partly, and I can say this because it was, it was, I, I was one of the ones that was pre pressing not to have calculus in A-level physics. Ah, okay. Um, not everyone that does physics does math. Yeah. Um, even those that do, they don't necessarily associate the calculus they learn in math with what calculus is in physics. Yeah. And in physics, it's more, impre more important that they appreciate that what they're doing is looking at yeah. the rate of change. Kind of yeah. okay. And that's what they're doing is something that's graphical. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in, in math, it's just yeah. simply they learn that x squares have a yeah. differential of 2x, and it's a, it's a theoretical construct that doesn't have any practical. Okay. And, and I suppose for a lot of students, if you love calculus and you love physics, <laughs> yeah. then you can do lots more at the university, can't you? If you're doing A-level physics or A-level, whatever, also university physics or university engineering, yeah. that's when you have years and years of it. So You do, and that's yeah. when you also discover one of the other problems, which is terminology differences. Yeah. Because mathematicians will say dy by dx, yeah. whereas physicists will tend to say x dot. Yeah. That, was that was one of the other problems we came across, that universities will say there should be calculus, but it should be taught in the way that we teach it with Leibniz yeah. um, uh, terminology yes. rather than Newtonian uh, stuff. So, so, yeah, that will cause the other thing. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for clearing us up. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, this is the ACR stand. Uh, you work for ACR, don't you? I do, yes. Do you write the exams? No, I don't write the exams. But it's a different team of people, isn't it? It's a different actually... team of people who write the exams. So, yes. I'm afraid I can't give you any insider information, but no. you've got a few nice demos. Magnetic linear accelerator. Very nice. And um, it's actually really simple, isn't it? It's, just it's a few really bits simple. Of wood. A few bits of wood, a few ball bearings, steel ball bearings, and some magnets, very strong magnets. Yeah. And you can do this. And so it looks like you get energy from nothing because you yes. put that slowly. But I suppose the trick is really that there's some, because of the way that these are set up beforehand, you've got that magnetic potential energy sort of stored in there. there. And that's pulling that towards it. Yeah. And then that transfers it all the way through those. That's very good. And then it shoots off the end. So that's nice. I think probably for students, this is really important. Yes. This is the mistakes that everybody made uh, last year. A lot of it's really obvious stuff, isn't it? Like yes. people. Um, and so I'm going to do a whole video about this, which is what I did last year as well. But often it's really simple things that people just make mistakes with, and not just for OCR, but for all the exam boards. Yes. So uh, I'm going to do some videos about this. Um, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, just a little bit about uh, what's the Perimeter Institute? What, what do you actually do for students? Right, the Perimeter Institute is basically the world's leading independent theoretical physics institute. Yeah. Uh, it was set up by uh, Mike Lazaridis, who was the person basically behind uh, Blackberry. So he, he made his uh, sort of millions on the back of, sort of theoretical physics research decades before, yeah. and he decided to invest in setting up uh, uh, an institute in his hometown. Uh, but part of their mission is to uh, look at educational outreach and educational activities. So not, not so much directly for students, yeah. but helping teachers uh, teach uh, difficult physics concepts uh, yeah. you know, better so that uh, eventually that obviously hopefully rubs off and improves student learning. Yeah, so I think it's really important actually there's lots of people who are wanting to help teachers do better lessons, aren't there? Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually over here, um, sorry, catching you unawares, um, if you do edXL, G, edXL A level, you've probably got a book. Um, what do you do? Well, I would buy the book by Miles Hudson. So this, if you're doing edXL <laughs> at A level, Correct. this guy's probably re uh, written the book that you're using to learn. So that's right. Yeah, books one and two for edXL A level physics. And who are they published by? Pearson. Okay, so a bit of a blatant kind of bit of advertising there, but actually, I think um, I think you know, you've been doing lots of stuff recently, haven't you? So yeah, I have my fingers in many pies in physics yeah. education. I think so. there's lots of us do, but um, this is the person. 
there's actually a name to the book, the, there's a, a face to the name on that's your book. Right, so. yeah. Miles Hudson's book, That's For Me. Yeah, very <laughs> good. Thank you. Right, see you later. Cheers. Thank you. So, finally back at my stand, and opposite me, I've got a, um, another YouTuber. Hi. Hi. From Red's Kitchen. Right, so we've got sweets here. Sweets. Um, yeah. So they're good, um, but also, <laughs> there's some books. And do you want to talk about what you've been up to for every minute of every hour for the last year, it seems? Um, writing loads and loads and loads of uh, books and questions. And yeah, that's what I do. I, and I'm just writing loads and loads So you're basically an author rather than a YouTuber at the moment, it feels like, does uh, it? For the moment, yeah. It's really hard to get the ears at the moment because I'm so busy writing books. Can we see the books? Yes, they right. are beautiful. By the way, I'm not going to make books for just By the sound of it, it's just far too much effort. Um, but I know that these are actually going to be really incredibly useful for all of you. So... That one there. Um, so trilogy, it's massive, isn't it? Look at the size now. I don't actually know how many pages it is, but it Does is four hundred and sixty-eight pages, and that cool. is like so, so many questions. It is, it is truly a thing of beauty. So, so I think this is nice because it's not just questions. It's like a bit of the theory, isn't it? A bit of the just a summary of like what you've probably done anyway in lessons. Yeah. And then it's retrieval questioning, which is good. Retrieval practice about the current topic, about other topics. So mixing stuff up, not just what you've done. Skills box which is either maths or practical yep. and then loads and loads and loads of exam style questions so basically um, like we've both been making lots and lots of videos so we've done like a lot of work and it's basically at some point down to you to watch the videos and actually sit down and just do question after question after question so um, and these ones here you've got uh, AQA Trilogy you've got um, Mind, Hiring Foundation and then Physics, chemistry, and biology. So We're actually, crazy and changing the colours. I've actually bought, yeah, so you've got pink for physics. Yeah. Um, you've got blue for chemistry. Yeah. And you've got orange for biology. Yeah. That's going to confuse everybody, isn't it? I know, but, you know, keeping them on their toes. Yeah, but no, I think this is actually quite good. That's actually, the, the graphics are really nice because some textbooks are rubbish, like in terms of and these are just, just very traditional. So inside so and out. It's um, true beauty. Cool. Uh, so there'll be a link below the video to kind of go and get your own copy. And obviously, Primrose Kitty, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to her. Um, for, for pretty much everything, isn't it? Pretty much everything. Have you exactly, finished yes. uh, A-level videos yet? What's, I'm, what's your I'm plan with that? I'm nearly on them. We're kind of like in the planning stage for A-level videos, and I'm writing the A-level textbook. Um, for A-level, A-level, A-level chemistry? chemistry? A-level chemistry. Okay. Yes, and then it's going to be all A-level videos, and um, brand new website coming soon, which is loads and loads and loads of retrieval practice questions, free online course. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of stuff. And so basically, if you're doing GCSE, by the time you kind of come on to like the, the A-level course, there'll be a lot more there ready for you. Yeah, A-level um, biology, A-level chemistry, I've got you covered. And obviously A-level physics online, so I think you can't be bothered yeah. to do that. And there's no way I'm going to do chemistry and biology. Exactly, it's yeah. far too boring for me <laughs> and too hard. Okay, um, but basically that is the ASC. Uh, this is like my only video. Uh, it's been quite tiring actually, hasn't it? I am exhausted, And yes. Yeah, I don't think I've sat down for many days. And when I do sit down, I have to stand up again and stuff, so yeah. it's been... It's been good, so until next time, goodbye.